Hello YouTube, this is Brandon Cusack with Cusack Prep. What I have for you is another video on how to prepare for the SAT, ACT, or maybe your Algebra 2 course, uh, possibly geometry as well, about completing the square for circle equations. Now, basically anytime you're asked an equation uh, or a question about circle equations, you can't really answer it unless it's in standard form. Uh, so currently this equation that's presented up here at the top is not in standard form, it's just in some regular polynomial form. Uh, recall what standard form is. I'm going to go ahead and just write this up at the top here. Uh, the standard form for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. Uh, so what we have right here are the steps right now for how you complete the square. And I'm going to take you through a sample problem using these steps. Uh, and then I'm going to take you through a slightly more difficult sample problem. When setting it up, the first thing you want to do is you want to group your x squared term and your x term together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x squared and I'm going to take this minus 4x. And I'm just going to put them in the same location over here. And I'm going to put parentheses around it. All right. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the y squared term. So this is going to be y squared minus 8y. And again, I'm just going to put parentheses around it. And I'm going to go ahead and move that 16 over to the other side. All right. That's basically it for step one. There's this if necessary, divide out the coefficient on the square terms. I'll explain that when I do the second example, which is going to be a little bit more complicated. Now, as far as completing the square goes, what you want to do is divide the coefficient, so that's this value right here on the x term, or on the y term by 2. You don't do it at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that over here. So if I do the 1 on the x term, it's negative 4. I'm going to divide it by 2. When I do that, I get negative 2. And then if I want to square that value, I'm just going to put parentheses around it and square it. And I'm going to get 4. Now, once it's squared, I'm going to go ahead and put this over here on this side. Now, I say add it to the x squared or y squared term. Uh, that's true. You just really want to add it to the section that it's in. And I'm going to do the same thing for that negative 8. So if I take negative 8 and I divide it by 2, uh, that's going to give me negative 4, which when I square it is going to give me 16. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add 16 here. And I'm going to add 16 here. Now, there's one thing you need to remember about equations. It's that if you do something to one side of the equation, you automatically have to do it to the other side. Meaning, on this right side here, I'm going to have to add 4, and I'm going to have to add 16 as well. So what that's going to do is when I uh, basically bring all this together, is I'm going to have x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus y squared minus 8y plus 16 is equal to 16 plus 16 plus 4 is 36. Now I go ahead and I factor this term and I factor this term. Uh, when factoring, we're not going to go too much into that in this video, but I need two values that add to 4. Sorry, multiply to 4 and add to negative 4. So that would be x minus 2 and x minus 2 which conveniently we can write as x minus 2 squared. You start to see how this is looking a lot more like the standard form. If I try to factor y squared minus 8y minus 16, again, they need to multiply to 16, add to negative 8. So that would be y minus 4 times y minus 4, which would give me y minus 4 squared is equal to 36, is equal to 36. And there you have it. Now you have the equation for a circle in standard form. And once it's in standard form, we can extract the critical components. For example, we could see the center of this is the point 2 comma 4, and the radius is 6. Now let's go through a slightly more difficult example where we use this if necessary part. So the sample that I'm going to write here is going to be 4x squared minus 16x. And I'm going to put, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, plus 4y squared minus 32y 
minus, uh, I don't know, I'm going to make something up here. I'm going to put 20 is equal to 0. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start the same way. We're going to go ahead and put our x squared terms and our x term next to each other, as well as our y squared term and our y term. So this would be 4x squared minus 16x. Again, I'm going to leave a space. 4y squared minus 32y. Set that equal to 20. Now, because there's a coefficient on the x squared and the y squared term, it is necessary here to divide both sides of the equation by whatever that coefficient is. Uh, in this case, that coefficient is 4. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to divide everything on both sides of the equation by 4. And I can just uh, draw this this way. So what I'm going to end up with after I do that division is x squared minus 4x y squared minus 8y is equal to 5. Now I can go ahead and complete the square. So uh, same numbers as before. So um, I take negative 4, I divide it by 2, I square it, I get plus 4. If I take negative 8, uh, divided by 2, negative 4 squared is going to be plus 16. And again, if I add 4 and 16 to the left side, I must add 4 and 16 to the right side. Now, when I go to factor it, again, I'm going to end up with x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is x minus 2 squared. And I'm going to end up with y minus 4 times y minus 4, which is y minus 4 squared. And I'm going to set that equal to the right side, uh, which now happens to be uh, 25. And again, now that I'm in the standard form, and only now that I'm in the standard form, can I figure out what the center of the circle is, as well as the radius. So in this case, the center of the circle would be the point 2 comma 4. And the radius would be 5. And that's how you do it. That's how you do... Uh, a couple of the most complicated problems that can ask you on the SAT or the ACT involving circle equations. Uh, most of you probably saw this in your geometry class, but now that it's come time to take the SAT, a couple years later you've probably forgotten it. So I really hope this video was helpful, uh, and I hope to post a few more examples in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe.